Welcome back to the Jamail Texas Swimming Center here in Austin, Texas. We now join the 400 individual medley. Bowen of Auburn in lane five, white cap. The orange uh, lettering has led all the way. Alenka Kajar of SMU has been right behind her. First and second, there's a battle for third. Bowen now picking it up a bit. She swam 159.03 was her split. Coach had hoped for a little bit more, a little bit faster. I just talked to Coach Bosch and he said she really needed to be 157 to have a shot at the record. But the key for her, she's got the 100 breast coming up in just a few minutes. This is all about the team title. She knows right now she's got the victory in hand, Chris. I think that's important for her to get that under her belt and get ready for the 100 breast. Not only that, but she's got the 800 free relay a few minutes after that, so she's got a busy session here. Victory is more important than records right now for the Auburn Tigers, a team that has never won an NCAA championship in a women's sport. Right now, Maggie Bowen cruises to the finish line, and she wins rather easily in 4.04.69. Kajar gets second, Bochevska in third. Well, you see the smile from Maggie Bowen, and I think she knows that she decided within that race, hey, let's not back off, let's not back off too much. Just enough to win and get this team victory going here for Auburn. Final results of the 400-yard individual medley. Auburn's Maggie Bowen wins in the time of 4.469. Alenka Kajar, SMU second. Mariana Boshevska finishes third. The 100-yard butterfly, the NCAA and American record set this morning in prelims. Cal's Natalie Coughlin blazing to a 50-67. Here are the swimmers. In lane one, Tanika Jamison of Texas. Lane two, Margaret Holzer of Auburn. Lane three, Jocelyn Yo, Texas. Lane four, the aforementioned Natalie Coughlin, California. Lane five, Shelly Ripple of Stanford. Lane six, Demaray Christensen of Auburn. Lane seven, Jana Cron of USC. And lane eight, Shannon Catalano of Pacific. Oh my goodness, there she is. I, I tell you, I've been around swimming a long time, Chris. I don't think I've ever seen a swimmer like this come along and has dominated so much during the season. And we asked her earlier what it's like to come in here as the dominator. Because I think there's less pressure on you um, to win races. And, it, and it's just about focusing on yourself and focusing on how you're going to do your, your best. And, um, I just think it takes a lot of pressure off, and I could enjoy the race a lot more. I, I just have never seen a year like she's had. I mean, over the last 12, 18 months, Chris, this, this woman has just been absolutely blazing. I, I've never seen anything like this, men or women, come along in a long, long time. To challenge the record, her split, we think, has to be 24 seconds or under. Well, we were talking to her coach a little while ago, that's what she said she needs to be, at least 24 flat or better. Not only to challenge the record, but she thinks, hey, why not? Let's try to go under 50 seconds. That would be something that you know, only comes along once in a lifetime. She's so good underwater. Now watch, you see above the water, very skipping along the water. She has very powerful strokes. But watch when she comes off the walls. That's where she is so good. That underwater dolphin kick stays underwater longer than any her 50 split, 23-40. Oh, she's got a great shot. Watch this, 36 right there. Oh, my goodness. We may see history in the making, Chris. Could be another American record. Natalie Coughlin of California. She set two records this morning. She's heading to the wall, looking for the record. Natalie Coughlin driving. Oh! A 50-01. A new NCAA and American record. She just missed breaking the 50-second barrier. <laughs> you hear the crowd? I have, I have headphones on. I even heard the crowd go, oh! <laughs> it was so close. 50.01, almost breaking the 50 second barrier. Natalie Coughlin. Look at this turn right here. She comes off the wall. You can see she's so crisp on her turns and she goes underwater further than anybody else. Stays on her side, gives her a little bit more momentum coming off the walls. Her coach said she needed to charge the walls better and she'd have a chance. And look at the finish here. Look how far back everybody else is. Now, Shelly Ripple had a great swim. 51.5 was the American record just a little while ago until Natalie Coughlin came along. Got lost again, but what a swim for Natalie Coughlin. The results of the 100-yard butterfly, Cal's Natalie Coughlin. 50.01, Shelly Ripple, Stanford second, Jocelyn Yo of Texas in third. Let's get down to the deck.
and Cynthia Potter. Cynthia? Natalie, you've been so incredibly dominant this year, and Rowdy Gaines talked about you breaking that 50-second barrier. You almost did it. Tell me your thoughts on that. Uh, I really wasn't expecting to break that 50-second 50 50 barrier, but I was just really fired up from the relay, and I just kept it going to the, to the hunter fly. One last question. When you're swimming so many events with basically minutes in between, what do you do to relax and get ready for the next one? Um, I just try and do my breathing exercises, really slow breathing, shake out my legs, and just get really excited and carry that adrenaline through the beat. Congratulations. Absolutely marvelous. Thank you. So an amazing swim for Cal's Natalie Coughlin. We'll see much more of her a little bit later. Coming up next, however, American record holder Tara Kirk. Welcome back. You're looking at one of the most famous landmarks in the Longhorn State, the famous clock tower on the campus of the University of Texas. Time now for the 100-yard breaststroke. Stanford's Tara Kirk holds the NCAA and American records at 58-68, and she is in this race. The lane assignments in one, Lindsay Erder of Georgia. In two, Ashley Roby, Georgia. Lane three, Agnes Kovach, ASU. Lane four, Tara Kirk, Stanford. And Paleska of Alabama is in five. Stacyanna Stitz of Cal is in six. Maggie Bowen of Auburn is in seven. Kristen McGregor of USC is in lane eight. There you see an American record holder. And you think you've got it tough, Chris. You don't have it tough, man. I tell you, to get ready not only for these championships mentally, but she also had to worry about exams, too. My two finals were my human biology finals. So I'm taking the human biology core, and there's an A side and a B side. So A side this quarter is cell biology and developmental biology. They were pretty tough. I'm not really sure how I did, but hopefully it was good. Tara Kirk is unbeaten in 17 collegiate races over the last two years. The defending NCAA champion, she swam 59-18 a year ago. She's in lane four. I think right underneath her, uh, Anna Paleska from Alabama, the sophomore, has a little bit of a chance. She will be very good. She's a solid international swimmer. But you can see Tara Kirk with that S cap. Watch when she comes in the walls. Let's keep this right here. Come off the wall here. This is where Richard Quick, her coach, said she is so good. Keeps her line. See that head position, Chris? See how straight it is with her spine? She doesn't drop her head at all. She's so powerful under underwater pull-offs that that sometimes causes a swimmer to drop her head. Not Tara Kirk. She's so good and so clean and powerful off the walls, and that's one of her strengths, especially according to Richard Quick. Final 25 yards for Tara Kirk, Haleska, Stitz, Bowen, McGregor, all battling for second and third. Kovac is there. 58-68. Tara Kirk again. And Kirk swims a 59.03 as she wins it. Second, Maggie Bowen. And in third is Ann Paleska. A lot of expectations coming into this meet. She's had a lot to weigh in her mind. She talked about the final exams that she's had to worry about all week. But you can see how powerful she is underwater. As she comes into the turn here, you can see those legs, that leg strength is her forte. But as she comes into the wall and off the wall, watch as she comes, very straight. See her head there? Never drops, looks very much at the bottom of the pool, very much in line with her spine. And at the top, right there in the middle of the pool with the black cap, clearly the head of the class here in the Hunter Breaststroke just missed her American record. They call her Captain Kirk because she moves through the pool at warp speed, the second fastest 100 breaststroke in history. Kirk finishes first, Maggie Bowen, Auburn second, and Paleska is third. Set now for the 100-yard backstroke. Cal's Natalie Coughlin holds all the records. She swam 50-57, leading off the 400 medley relay earlier in the competition. Here are the swimmers. Joanna Fargus of USC is in one. Jenny Anderson, Auburn in two. Susan Wester, Indiana in three. Natalie Coughlin, California in four. 
In lane five, Beth Botsford of Arizona. Lane six, Kirsty Coventry of Auburn. Lane seven, Sarah Marshall of Pacific. And in lane eight, Mika Mabry of Georgia. Well, we're starting to run out of superlatives with this young lady, Natalie Coughlin. But I tell you, to show you how fast she is, she's three seconds faster than the second-ranked swimmer. That happens to be an Olympic gold medalist. So shows you how good she is and how far ahead she is of the rest of the field. She's prelim time, but gives no indication of how fast she's going to swim. Talking about that Olympic champion, there she is. She's the 96 Olympic champion in the 100 backstroke. This event has struggled a little bit in the years following the Olympics, but has come into her own now and swimming very well as an Arizona junior. But let's not forget Auburn and the team title, which is so important here. Kirsty Coventry from Auburn, only a freshman, one of two freshmen in the finals here for Auburn. I was talking to David Marshall a little while ago, the head coach, and he said this is where this middle tier swimmer is so critical, Chris, in the team title chase. And that's where these swimmers, Coventry and Jenny Anderson, the other freshman up there in lane number two, will play a big part in the team title if Auburn has a chance to win. Early, Auburn has the lead, followed by Georgia, Texas, and Stanford. We'll update those numbers right after this race. 100-yard backstroke. part of the first 25 yards and Natalie Coughlin the only question how fast is she going to swim Rowdy Gaines <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny because I'm watching the shot I feel sorry for our poor cameraman because she's so far ahead of the field you try to keep the focus on the field at least early in the race but she just leaves the field completely already a body and a half length ahead of everybody else and believe me I'm not laughing at the rest of the field because they are doing such a superb job in their own right but Natalie Coughlin look at this swim right here oh my gosh 24-3 at the 50 Chris this could be something special Natalie Coughlin in lane four she is on record pace Natalie Coughlin blowing away the field oh. Natalie Coughlin lane four driving to the finish line 48 49 she could do it she did it she did it she did it she breaks 50 oh. seconds <laughs> Natalie Coughlin She broke the record in a relay on the first night of competition. She does it again in the 100-yard backstroke final. You know, Chris, it's not often I'm speechless, but I don't know what to say. Natalie Coughlin of Cal. A new American record of 49.97. Susan Westner of Indiana finishes second. Beth Botsford of Arizona third. So the championship standings after 12 events, Auburn has opened up a significant lead over Georgia. Stanford is in third, followed by Texas and Arizona. We're coming back, and when we do, three-meter springboard diving. Welcome back to the Jamail Texas Swimming Center, where the springboard competition is underway. I'm Chris Marlowe. Now for a preview, here is Cynthia Potter. Thanks, Chris. Leading into this diving competition, I thought it would be very difficult for anyone to dethrone defending champion Yulia Pakalina from the University of Houston until I saw Southern Cal's freshman, Blythe Hartley. She jumps higher than any other woman in the world, in my opinion, and she was able to win the one-meter championship with dives that skied way above the rest of the field. Yulia Pakalina doesn't get too excited about the one-meter, but she was able to pull off that second place not quite defending her title. She thinks she owns the three meter and she gets a lot more excited about diving three meter than she does one meter. But I know that there is one more person that could dethrone Yulia and upset Blythe Hartley if she comes back in the three meter as well. Sarah Ryling from Indiana University who went to the Olympics on the platform for the US but has a whole new list of high degree of difficulty dives. And if she hits those high degree of difficulty dives, she could definitely be on the top stand in this championship. Final two rounds of three meters springboard diving. Here is our leaderboard. Yulia Pakalina from Houston is our leader. Blythe Hartley is in second. Sarah Ryling, followed by Michelle Davison, Quinn, Macaulay, Fusaro, and Madeline rounding out the top eight in the final. Aaron Quinn, the senior from Indiana, is up next. She's been doing a fabulous job. 
She's just one point, a little over one point behind Michelle Davison, the Olympian from Miami. So she's just breathing on that fourth place spot, a reverse two and a half tuck. Now the key to that dive is being in balance on the end of the board. Erin was in balance and it was a very good takeoff, but she's a little bit lazy in that tuck. She could be just a bit quicker as she takes off, getting in and pulling those legs into the tuck tighter, getting in a smaller ball, if you will, in the air. See, she's just a little messy in that tuck. I don't think she's going to receive the eights because of that. Talking to Coach Jeff Huber, sevens and a seven and a half. The dive total, 58-80. Sarah Riley, the Olympian, on the platform. This was not her Olympic event, but she is a U.S. national champion also in this event. She is doing four new dives, and her, she resembles her mother so much. I think they look so much alike. It could be sisters. Yeah, what I about might the, get some points for that. What about the dad? <laughs> well, he's wonderful, but I don't think Sarah looks a whole lot like him. The dad is the cameraman. <laughs> things to prepare for the 2004 Olympic team. She's doing all these new dives. She's doing four out of six new dives in her list on this three meter springboard. This is one of her new dives. A fabulous jump. She is really very assertive, aggressive on her takeoffs, and that's what it's going to take to win a medal in 2004. And she is doing all the right dives. She has two years to perfect them. And isn't it wonderful to know that the U.S. is working on all the women from the U.S. are doing these kind of things. So this is a good thing. Sixes and six and a half. A total of 57 for Sarah Riley of Indiana. Blythe Hartley. University of Southern California won the one meter, really walked away with the one meter very easily here. She's the world champion on the one meter. She has struggled at times on the three meter, but her jump is the best in the competition. She soars above the diving board. Reverse one and a half to two and a half twist. Watch how high she jumps. And she goes right past vertical. This is the first dive that she has come near missing in two days of watching her dive. She goes over rotating. Just but look how high she is above the springboard when she finishes the dive. I think she could do another somersault there. It is just unbelievable that she is jumping that high, finishing the dive so easily. And she will be a contender in 2004. She is the world champion on the one meter, but she's got a little bit of work to do on the three meter. A beautiful job out of her thus far in the meet, though. Her total, 52-20. Yulia Pakalina is set now, 5-3, 1-10, out of Houston in Penza, Russia. All she needs is fours on this dive to stay in first place. It's her highest degree of difficulty dive. Yulia oh. Pacalina loves diving three meters. She doesn't get too excited about the one meter, but her coach, Jane Figueredo, told me, you know, I, I wish I had some kind of hot poker when the one meter, <laughs> but she doesn't need that on three meter because she loves competing on three meter. A forward three and a half somersault pike. She's the only woman doing this dive. It is a very difficult dive. She's the only one doing it in this contest, and it's going to pay off for her. Not only will it keep her in first place, it will increase her lead because she makes the dive easily, and she cleans up the entry just barely, barely slot short of vertical. It would have been nice. Big numbers for Pacalina. A total of 74.40. High scoring dive of the contest. The standings in three-meter diving. After five rounds, Yulia Pacalina from Houston is our leader. Life Hartley, Sarah Riling, and Aaron Quinn still a the catcher. When we come back, can Yulia nail down the championship? Stay with us. Welcome back to the Jamail Texas Swimming Center along with Cynthia Potter. I'm Chris Marlowe. Final round of three meter springboard diving is coming up. Here comes the Indiana Hoosier Aaron Quinn, her final dive. Made a move in the last round into the top four. Went ahead of Michelle Davison in this inward two and a half somersault tuck. She needs eights at this time to catch first place. At this time, she needs eights. She's early in the round, so we'll just have to see what happens after that. Oh, I love the 
dive. It's got a little bit of splash going in the water. I think it might receive a couple of eights. No, just under that. She's not going to receive any eights. I think the judges might have been a little bit stingy in that case because I thought it was a really pretty dive, completing the dive right about board level. Look where she's finishing, right there. And she just doesn't quite get her hands all the way back together for the rip entry, but a good job out of Erin Quinn. And that's her coach, Dr. Jeff Huber, giving her a hug. 59-40 for Erin Quinn of Indiana. Sarah Riley from Cynthia Potters. Old school, Indiana. The pride of Indiana. You started it off. Now Sarah Riley bringing it down the pike, I'd so love, to speak. I'd love to say I did, but I didn't start <laughs> it off. They've had a great tradition of diving. As Sarah Riley's parents look on, her father videoing, and her mother concentrating, trying to help her on this forward two-and-a-half somersault with one twist. It's a new dive also. Oh, that's great. Sarah Riley just has impressed me throughout this entire preliminary and final doing these difficult dives and doing them well. Four new dives in her list out of six. And look at the way she reaches for the water and stretches those feet. Oh man, she's got a lot in front of her. And I think in 2004, two years away, she could perfect these dives to be very, very competitive internationally for the medals at the Olympic Games. Solid total for Sarah Riley. 66 points on her final dive. Blythe Hartley's last dive of back one and a half, with two and a half twist. She talked to me earlier about uh, how it's been for her being a freshman at USC. I mean, the major reason why I came down was school, um, you know, getting an education. Uh, number two was diving with Hong Ping because I felt like, you know, he was a good coach. He could help me out. And, you know, I've learned also this year, if I can dive, you know, under these circumstances, um, you know, like the weather blowing and all that, then really going to international meets and diving indoors where there's not a lot of people, it shouldn't be that challenging. Bike needs seven and a halves to go into first place at this point. Seven and a halves. Back one and a half with two and a half twist. You know, she's got so much strength, so much power, and Hong Ping, I know, is disappointed about that because this woman is just amazing, doing these dives so high above the board. That is really unfortunate. I love her jumps. I love her work ethic and her stretch, you know, and she's, she said this has not been a very easy time for her coming in and doing all of these you know, four, four hours in the preliminaries. The over-rotated entry cost her a total of 46.20. So a few minutes ago, Cynthia Potter said that Yulia Pakalina was going to be the champion, and it looks like she is, unless a belly flop is coming. <laughs> her nickname is Boo Boo, and uh, Boo Boo's gonna win big because I didn't think anybody could challenge her on the one meter or the three meter. Blythe Hartley has defeated her on the one meter, but she came back with a vengeance, and she has never been defeated on this apparatus in college. And so she does it one more time. There's your champion. She needed threes to win this contest because that's how big a lead she had going into this last round dive. This is done so technically well. A back one and a half, a two and a half twist. The arms come up. She wraps the twist up right away. Looks at the water, grabs her hands. The only way that's going to get higher scores is if she's a little bit more square on the end of that. Jane Figueredo knows that she did a heck of a job and outdistanced her score from last year by a whole lot. Yulia Pagalina from Houston, the leader of Swim Slamma Jamma. The final results of three-meter springboard diving. Houston's Yulia Pagalina defends her NCAA title. Sarah Riling of Indiana, Blythe Hartley gets second and third. Coming up next, Wonder Woman, Cal's Natalie Coughlin goes for the win in the 200 back.
We welcome you back to the 2002 NCAA Women's Swimming and Diving Championships. This is the Jamail Texas Swimming Center, one of the fastest short course pools in the world. So far, Auburn has been the big story. The Tigers, after 14 events, have ballooned their lead. Georgia is in second, followed by Stanford, Arizona, and Texas. Hi again, everybody, and welcome along with Rowdy Gaines. I'm Chris Marlowe coming into this championship. Most of the talk centered around the number one team in the nation, the Stanford Cardinal, rightly so. The Cardinal has had a great season, but all of the dialogue here has centered around the Tigers, the Auburn Tigers. They've been impressive. They really have, Chris. When you talk about it, the ingredients for a national championship team, Auburn seems to be putting it all together. You start with the coaching staff. The head coach, David Marsh, has put together a great team. He's already won two national championships with the men. Then you have to have a superstar, and they have just that in Maggie Bowen, already smashing the American record in the 200 IM, winning the 400 IM, one of the most versatile swimmers in the world today. And she has a lot of leadership. She's a junior. She's leading this team by example also. And they have the exuberance and youth that we all seem to crave. Nine of the 11 swimmers that they brought to this meet are either freshmen or sophomores, and they've all gone lifetime best right here. The Coughlin family ready to rock. Mother Zenny, sister Megan, and Daddy Jim. The 200-yard bat stroke. The NCAA and American records held by the daughter, sophomore Natalie Coughlin, 150-90. Here are the swimmers. Kirsty Coventry in one, Joanna Fargus in two, Alanka Kajar in three, Natalie Coughlin in four, Margaret Holser in five, Beth Botsford in six, Jessica Hayes in seven, Alice Enriquez in eight. You see Natalie Coughlin there, Chris. She's got a real shot. Not only, now you look at that prelim time, and it's almost laughable because she really will be probably almost four seconds, if not more, faster than that in the final. She really looked like she was cruising in the prelims. Talking to her coach, Terry McKeever, said so much pressure has been put on her in this race and over this entire competition. Her sister there, very enthusiastic, Chris. You know, she really has a chance to go under 150, which would you know, be almost as amazing, if not more, than when she did went under 50 seconds for the 100 backstroke. Same thing here. She needs to be about 54 flat on the way at the halfway point to have a chance. A unique look from our underwater camera. Backstrokers start in the water. It's a very strong field. Ladies, 200 yards, backstroke. Take your mark. Watch it, lane four, Natalie Coughlin of Cal expected to take it out very, very fast. You see the depth that she had. That's one thing that Coach McKeever said she needs to do. She needs to keep underwater longer than she did this uh, morning in the prelims. Already a full body length ahead of the field. And I'm glad you made that point, Chris, because let's not let these other swimmers get lost in the way that what Natalie, the great Natalie Coughlin is doing. They're all wonderful swimmers. This is a superb field, but they just get lost in the shuffle when Natalie Coughlin swims. Look at that wall right there. Superb underwater swimming right there. Great dolphin kick, very much in line. She keeps everything going with those hips. Look at the head position now, nice and still, rolling those shoulders. Just textbook picture perfect as far as her swimming. Completely disappears from you when she goes underwater, spending a, quite a bit of time underwater. Now, does she go into oxygen debt, spending so much time underwater? That could be a good point here at the halfway point. Let's check it out. 52-9 on the way. Oh my goodness, that's real fast on the way out. Natalie Coughlin. With the lead, Margaret Holser is in second, right below her. Beth Botsford, the 1996 Olympic champion, is in third. But this race belongs to Natalie Coughlin. Coughlin on American record pace at the moment. Well, the halfway point would have won the 100 backstroke a little while ago when she swam. You can see she's tiring, though. See the head position kind of bobbing up and down? She's really getting tired. She needs to be... Oh, that's 29 flat or better to be able to go under 150, and I think she's got a great shot, Chris. Coglin pulling away from the field. Holzer is trying to catch up. Alanka Kajar from SMU is turning it on. There's a great battle for second and third, but this race is about Cal's Natalie Coglin. Can she break her own record? Keep an eye on the clock. 145. She's at the flag. She's going to do it. She's going to do it. Natalie Coglin, she reaches and she's got a new record. She's under 150 at 149.52. Finishing second is Kajar. Kirsty Coventry of Auburn gets up for third. What a swim for Natalie Coughlin. <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at you, Chris, like, 
what do you say when something like that happens? Just absolutely amazing. Right down to the deck and Cynthia Potter. Cynthia? Natalie, I get to keep talking to you because you keep slamming records. Congratulations. Your coach had commented before the meet that there was a lot of pressure on you coming in here just because of such great expectations. How have you been able to deal with that? Um, it's definitely been hard dealing with all that pressure, but I try to just take it as it comes and just try to really have fun with the meet. It must be nice having your parents here. I know they're up there waiting for a wave from you. How about that? It's just great to have my family and friends here and just feel all their support. Their daughter swims under 150, the first performer in history to do that. Alenka Keja finishes second. Kirsty Coventry finishes third. Ready now for the 100-yard freestyle. Stanford's Jenny Thompson holds both the NCAA and American records at 47-61, set way back in 1992. The lane assignments, Aaron Phoenix of Texas is in one. Manon Van Royen, Miami in two. Rebecca Short, Auburn in three. Maritza Correa, Georgia, the favorite, in four. Stephanie Williams, Georgia, in five. Aileen Koparopa, Auburn in six. Sarah Tolar, Arizona, in seven. And Lacey Boutwell of Stanford is in lane eight. Great field, Chris, but you see Maritza Correa right there, the top qualifier, won the 50 already, broke the American record, long-standing American record by Amy Van Dyken. She faded a little bit earlier, the 200 freestyle. I expected her to be a lot better than she did there. Was the champion in that a couple years ago, but she'll have a lot of speed and will be the one to beat, as you see her parents, Vincent and Ann, right there. Vincent's the cheerleader, Ann is the photographer. <laughs> and if she's going to get a challenge, it could come from that woman, Stephanie Williams. It sure can. She has been the leader for this team for four years at Georgia, three-time national champion on team-wise, but she's never won an individual title. Talked to her coach a little while ago, Jack Barrel, and he said it would be awful sweet for her to be able to go out in style and win this Hunter freestyle. Pariah figures to show the early speed and try and hang on. Williams in five. Look for Koparova in six and Tolar in seven. A great closer. Well, you said it, Chris. That's a good point. Early on, you know she's going to have the speed. Look at that first turn. Real good momentum going into that first turn. Right, so nice and high in the water, right there in the middle of the screen. Good shot underwater. Her coming into this wall has great walls. You can see her come off. Real good streamlined position, nice and long. Keeps in line. Now, she's got a good view. Because she's in the middle of the pool, she can see both sides of her. Now, the rest of the field will creep on her, up on her, especially Stephanie Williams, to her right, coming home in lane number five. Karaya, Aaron Phoenix swimming well in lane one. It's Maritza Karaya in lane four. Right below her is Stephanie Williams, but she's not going to catch her. Maritza Karaya is going to win it. And she broke the American record. record. Karaya 47-56. Williams gets second. Tolar gets up for third. Ten years old. Jenny Thompson's American record gone. Let's go down to Cynthia. Maritza, congratulations. What a fabulous race and a great record. How important is it when you're swimming this race to be able to see on both sides of you? Um, I don't really pay attention to everybody else. I, the hunter is so short, you just gotta swim your own race and just keep going. <laughs> Did you have any dreams of this record? I had no idea until Thursday that I could even get an American record at this meet, but since Thursday at that 50, I knew I had a shot at this 100. It's nice that your parents were here to support you too. I think they're up there waiting for a wave. Congratulations. We're both here to see that. That's great, congratulations. Maritza Karaya, she takes down Amy Van Dyken in the 50. She knocks off Jenny Thompson in the 100. A new American record for Maritza Karaya, 47-56. Stephanie Williams gets second. Sarah Tolar in third. What's up next? Another record. The 200 breaststroke is next. An American record set in 1999 by former Georgia star Christy Kowal, 207-66. Let's meet the swimmers. Lane one, Elvira Fisher from UCLA. Lane two, Katie Hathaway from North Carolina. Lane three, Ashley Roby, Georgia. Lane four, Tara Kirk, Stanford. 
Agnes Kovac of Arizona State is in five. Ann Paleska, Alabama in six. Corey Clark, Penn State in seven. And Carrie Hen, the junior from Minnesota, in eight. Chris, here you see Tara Kirk won the 100 breaststroke earlier. American record holder in the 100 breast. Very quick prelim time, 2.09.9. You see her parents, Margaret and Jeff, cheering her on. She's, uh, she's had a lot to uh, cheer about. She's doing so well here. Last year, Tara Kirk, second in this event, touched out by Amanda Beard after leading the entire race. Wants to make amends. Kirk in lane four should take it out. Very, very fast, Rowdy Gaines. She really should. She's got that great speed. As I was talking to Coach Quick a little while ago, her coach, she said he said the middle 100 is the key to her. The first 50, you know she's going to be there. That middle 100, she cannot lose her composure, keep it the walls nice and strong like she's used to doing. You can see that stroke of hers up and over the water. Look at those hands come way back and then just reach up and over the water. Strongest kick of any swimmer in the field. She just tires sometimes the last 50 or so, and that's where Kovac and Paleska could come in big time, both European swimmers. Kirk has the lead. Right above her, Ashley Roby is in second. There's a battle for second. Agnes Kovac is right there, and Paleska, Corey Clark, and up in lane one, Elvira Fisher. Well, five and six are pushing her right now. You see six right there, right out of view. Now, Tara Kirk is doing a great job early on. This is exactly where she needed to be. She's 102, 103 going out. That's going to be very quick, and she's going to be a lot faster than that. Whoa! Plus, very quick on the way out. A lot faster than I thought 102 flat, maybe. But you can see the other swimmers, Kovac and Paleska especially. Keep an eye on them. This is where they'll start to inch up on Kirk. This is, shapes up the a great three-woman race, exactly what we thought coming in. Kirk has a slight lead in lane four. Black cap, big red S on the top of it. And Paleska in six is second and Agnes Kovac now making a move in lane five well, she's coming up them. right on a right on Kirk yeah both of them Chris are exactly right both Kovac and Pelesco are right there don't count either one of them out Kirk's holding them off though and that's what coach Crick wanted her to do hold them off that mid 100 and then just hang on for dear life this last 50. Kirk was touched out last year can she hang on in 2002 oh it's going to be tough it's going to be tough to be able to do that against these swimmers Tara Kirk of Stanford. Doing, what a great last turn she had. Right behind her is Kovac. Paleska is there. It's Kirk. Here comes Kovac. Kirk, Kovac. They stretch. Kirk got it. And Kirk wins it. American record. Again, 207.36. American record. Oh, man, what a race. Two fastest times in history. Kovac went under the American, well, she's not American, but she went up under the NCAA review, but Tara Kirk, woo! Boy, did she split wonderfully that last 25. Was that a wonderful last turn by Tara Kirk? I thought maybe she was out of it, but watch this turn coming into the wall here. She just was splendid coming off and into the turn. You see that long reach she has, nice tuck there, keeps it long. Strong, doesn't waver that head. Look at that head position. Perfectly still, looking down at the bottom of the pool. And then finishing up top, she did exactly what Coach Quick told me she did needed to do. Do a great job that middle 100, and then hold him off the last 50. And look at Paleska, and then, uh, excuse me, Kovac right underneath her, and Paleska come on at the end. But they ran out of room. Woo! What a great race for Tara Kirk. The final results of the 200-yard breaststroke Tara Kirk going at warp speed, 207.36. More records for her. Agnes Kovac finishes second, and Paleska outstanding in third. Ready now for the 200-yard butterfly. Lee Min Liu holds the NCAA record, 153.36. The great Mary T. Maher still has the American record of 152.99. It's the oldest American record still on the board. The lanes, Demaray Christensen, Auburn in one. Caitlin Sandino, USC in two. Georgina Lee, SMU in three. Shelly Ripple, the favorite. Stanford in four. Rebecca Harper of Florida in five. Lauren Stinnett, George Mason in six. Margaret Holser, Auburn in seven. Michaela Kwasny from Southern Cal in eight. And there's the top qualifier, Shelly Ripple. There you see Jan and Steve. Jan there in the middle, Steve Ripple on the right. Wonderful athletes themselves. Jan's a, an exceptional triathlete. And here we go, Chris. This is going to be good. 
Shelly Ripple in her final individual race. Her last chance to win an individual title. She has been overshadowed so much in her career, as outstanding it has been. First of all, it was Misty Hyman. She had to face her for three years. Misty Hyman going top in the tournament fly last year, the Olympic gold medals. Here, it's been Maggie Bowen. She almost broke the American record in the 200 IM in the very beginning. And then she was overshadowed by Natalie Coughlin, almost breaking the record in the 100 butterfly. She is set up perfectly for this race, though, Chris. Ripple has the early lead by about a half a body length. Right above her in lane three, SMU's Georgina Lee is second. Right below her, Rebecca Harper of Florida is in third. Very smooth there. Keep it under control. Richard Quick, her coach, said not to force the first 75. Let it flow naturally. Use her legs a lot more in the prelims. Her time was a bit slow, but she didn't use her legs at all. You can see those hips going into it much more. She needs to be about 54 flat or better. That's very good, solid, right where she wants to be to have a chance. She needs to come home in about 58 plus to have a chance at the record. Shelly Ripple leading by a little bit more than a body length now. She widens it out right above her. Georgina Lee is second along with Rebecca Harper, those three. Good turn there. Look at that. A full 10, 12 meters off the wall. That means she's not going into oxygen yet. yet. She's very rhythmic with her stroke. Look at her hips. Good shot under the water of her. Good turn there. She goes nice and deep. Goes over to her side. Very long on the water. She's still got a lot of oak stuff still left in her, Chris. Shelly Ripple has started lengthening, lengthen her lead. Shelly Ripple into the final turn. Looking for her first individual title ever. Chasing her is Georgina Lee of SMU. Well, but she's Ripple's, going to get the title. She is going to get the title. Shelly Ripple. And she wins it. Oh, just missed the record. 153-23. Just missed that American record. She gets the NCAA record. But not the American record, 152.99, but that's a wonderful smile, and she deserves to smile, believe me. Individual champion last, her final individual run. And Jan and Steve Ripple feel the enjoyment also. And somewhere in the swimming world of the United States, Mary T. Maher <laughs> breathes right. a sigh of relief. The final results of the 200-yard butterfly, Shelly Ripple of Stanford wins it. A new NCAA record, 153-23. Georgina Lee out of SMU gets second. Rebecca Harper of Florida finishes third. Go away, however. Lots more to come. Platform diving is up next. Austin, platform diving is underway. And the three rounds, our leader is USC's Blythe Hartley. Her teammate, Nikki Passaro, is second. Nicole Porenik from Texas is third. Here is Megan Zach from Texas A&M, another Canadian from Alberta. Did very well at the Big 12 Championships, becoming the first woman ever to sweep all three diving events. She's going to be doing a arm stand back, two somersaults and a pike, 2.8 degree of difficulty. She was 11th in this event last year, so she didn't make the finals. And she is just a wonderful girl. I, I think she's one of the nicest, sweetest, hardest working divers around. Texas A&M is very lucky to have had her for these four years. Nice, she just barely left that. She went into the water. That arm stand is perfect as she leaves the tower. And she takes a good look at the water underneath her, unfolds without an arch in her, all the way through to the water before she goes into it and just splashes a little bit towards the platform and that indicates a little bit under rotate. Judges uh, give her six and a halves and sevens, a score of 54-60 for Megan Zach. Texas freshman Nicole Perenic is next. Runner-up on platform at the Big 12 Championships. She'll do a reverse two and a half somersault. Tuck, 2.7 degree of difficulty. Was in third place going into this round. Needs six and a halves to go into first at this time. She is a prior national champion in the U.S., so she has some confidence on the platform, although there are still some dives she would like to learn to increase her degree of difficulty. Needs six and a half. It's a nice 
sneak dive. It's just a little bit conservative as she goes in the water. If she was a little bit more assertive, and I think she took a little bit too long to leave the platform. I think sometimes the judges question whether you really have confidence in a dive or not when you take a long time before you leave the platform. She'll get sixes at six and a half. Her score, 52-65. Life Hartley from Southern Cal is up next. The third Canadian in our field. She's already won the one meter. And she is a talented diver. She'll do an arm stand back to an half somersault. From the pike position, 2.8 degree of difficulty. Well, like I said, she can jump to the moon, but this is not a dive that she's going to be jumping on because she's going to leave the platform from her hands. The women do not have to do an arm stand in their list, but many of them choose to because many of them came out of gymnastics. Oh, that's a big arch in her back, but she controls it, and that's all you have to do is get control of it, dip, demonstrate the control, and the judges will not take off can do whatever you want before you get control of that arm stand as long as you don't come down out of the arm stand. That should keep her in first place. You see she leaves the tower and has perfect control of the dive. Wonderful. Look at that push off of her hands. You know that takes a lot of upper body strength and I know she's worked hard in the weight room this year. Good scores. Six and a half. Seven, seven and a half, a score of 60-20 for Blythe Hartley. Well, here is the Indiana junior Sarah Riling, who had some difficulty in one of the earlier rounds. Exactly. In round two began the unraveling of Riling when she did an arm stand. This was her most difficult dive in the meet. And you see her having trouble balancing here. She came down out of the arm stand. That is called a balk. After she does complete the dive, two points were deducted from each judge. As a result, one of the lowest scoring dives of the competition. So Riley currently in eighth place. And she needs really some good dives now to get back into any kind of contention. Well, unfortunately, she cannot go into first place with this dive, but she needs nines to go into second. No, she's just having a horrible meet. Now, ever since that problem in the second round, nothing yep. has gone right for Sarah Riling. And once again, her jump off the platform, just, just unbelievably low with a slide forward, bend of the knees a little bit. And that is really a shame for Sarah Riling because she is hugely talented. And I just think that that second round miss really messed with her. Lost her focus at the moment. And that's the slow lowest scoring dive of the meet. 26-10. So after four rounds of platform diving, USC's Blythe Hartley continues to lead. Texas's Nicole Perenic has moved up into second. Megan Zach is third. And with her troubles on the platform, Sarah Riling finds herself in last place. Final round of platform diving. Cassandra Cardinal, the Indiana sophomore, currently in sixth place. Kind of a surprise here in the platform final eight. Should do a back, two and a half somersault, one and a half twists, pike. 3.4, that's a big dive for her. It is, it's her highest degree of difficulty dive. Be nice if she could get some sevens on this dive because that would definitely move her up, I think, in the top five. Oh, that's a nice clean entry. A little better toe point on this, and I think she would receive seven and a halves. And maybe even higher. Her coach, Dr. Jeff Huber, says she is hugely talented. And this is a nice dive. It's a lot of dive. It's a back two and a half somersault with one and a half twist at 3.4 degree of difficulty. This will pay off in the last round. And she will have to wait and see what the rest of the competitors do because she is first in the order. And as we see her come around and stretch for the water, just need a little more tightness and a better toe point for eights. Big score for Cardinal. 73-10. Texas A&M's Megan Zach is next. Zach is currently in sixth place. She'll do a back two and a half somersault, one and a half twists, pike, 3.4. So she's loaded up the DD on this one. Yes, she has, and this is a huge competition for Megan Zach. She's always been so nervous when it gets to big meets, and she's doing a great job in third place right now, and if she receives 
six and a halfs on this dive, she will go into first place at this point. That would be a really good thing for Megan Zach because there's not a whole lot of people after her that can knock her out of the top three. Oh, very nice. Megan Zach held it together throughout the competition. This is just wonderful for the Texas A&M senior and for her coach, Kevin Wright. She's been capable of this all along. She's another Canadian diver who has had some very good training, both at school and in Canada. That'll get some sevens for sure. Nice tight twist. See, that's the whole key to doing a good twister is not wobbling in the twist. And that's hard to do. You put your arms close to your body after you wrap up. So Megan Zach will have to sit and wait. She got a 69-70. Gets a hug from the coach. Nicole Perenic from Texas is next. Currently in seventh place. She's going to do an inward three and a half somersault from the tuck position. And she's got some degree of difficulty, a 3.2, so a chance to move up. Yeah, and if she does this dive as well as she did it in the prelims, she received 65.60 points in the prelims. She will stay definitely in the top three. That would be a big boost for the Longhorns. We haven't had a finalist other than Nicole Prinnick in this NCAAs. not quite as good as she did in the preliminaries, but it's a solid dive. It shows confidence. She knows where the inward three and a half is. This is the most difficult inward spinning dive that can be done off the platform for the women at this time. And it's a little bit short, but at this time, it's gonna keep her in the top three. And of course, those knees are a little bit apart in the tuck. Matt Scoggin, her coach, and I talked about that earlier, said that would help if she could get her knees together. Needed sevens to move into first. She didn't quite get there. 60-80 for Nicole Perenic. That puts her in second place. Here now is Blythe Hartley. Hartley's going to do a back one and a half somersault, three and a half twists from the free position, 3.2 degree of difficulty. This has been a great competition for Blythe Hartley. She needs threes to go into first place. And if she goes into first place, she will be the winner, in my opinion, because I don't think Sarah Riling can catch her. Blythe Hartley having a wonderful NCAAs. She will get above threes on this dive, but it wasn't one of her best entries going into the water. She, as we say, dug on the entry. She pikes down too hard, I'll tell you, right where this happens, right there. She's looking a little bit too far underneath there, and you see she still had a long way to drop to the water. So she went over on the dive, but she's still gonna win the event, which is just terrific for USC and Blythe Hartley because she will now have two NCAA titles under her belt. Her coach, Hong Ping Lee, and her score is 52.80, and that should do it. Life Hartley from USC is going to be our winner. Our congratulations to her. The final results of 10 meter platform diving. Life Hartley wins her first NCAA title. Megan Zach finishes second. Nicole Perenic gets third. Let's go down to Cynthia Potter. Cynthia. Life, I know it's been a grueling week for you doing all of this diving, but how rewarding is this? Uh, I mean, this is great. It has been a very long week, and I'm very exhausted, but this is a good way to end it, especially because Tower is in my event, so I'm really happy. What did you learn from your freshman year and diving in NCAA competition? Um, I've had to make a lot of adjustments, that's for sure, um, and basically just to pursue. I mean, never give up, because these events are very long, and you know, close together and everything, and they're really demanding. So just pursue and never give up. Well, you've made a believer out of all of us. You can do it. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. We'll I have more from the Jamail Texas Swimming Center after these messages. Final event of the meet, the 400-yard freestyle relay. All the records belong to Texas. Lene, Kitson, Jamison, and Phoenix, 314-52. Here are the teams in lane one, Wisconsin, lane two, Florida. Arizona's in three, Auburn in four. 
Georgia in five, SC in six, Texas in seven, and California in lane eight. There's the crowning for Auburn right there. What a way to go out for them. Top qualifier, and it's appropriate that the Georgia Bulldogs are right next to them. Going to be a battle between those two teams, the three-time defending champions and now the new champions. Ladies, 400 yards. Freestyle relay. Take your mark. Keep your eye, on, uh, your eye on lane eight. Natalie Coughlin of Cal swimming the opening leg. She has a chance to set a record here. That's a great point, Chris. Don't lose sight on an American record. We just saw Maritza Karaya do it 47-56. That's the record that Natalie Coughlin has another chance of getting, as many as she's broken. Believe it or not, she has a chance in the 100 freestyle. She's not out quite as fast, though. 22-75. Actually, she is faster. She's about six one-hundredths faster than Maritza Karaya. Becky Short swimming the opening leg for Auburn. Stephanie Williams opening it up for Georgia. Those are the two that figure to challenge at the end. Well, Cal won't challenge on the team. They'll fall off after Coughlin. But, boy, she's going to make it interesting in the beginning. 47-56. Could she break another record? She did it! 47-47. And into the water for California is Danielle Bex, another outstanding swimmer. So California has the lead after the first 100. Natalie Coughlin has broken another record. So what else is new? <laughs> what else is new? That's getting kind of boring, isn't it? Nika Mabry in the water for Georgia. Aileen Koparova in the water for Auburn. Sarah Toller swimming well for Arizona, trying to make up some time on the outside. Well, you can see now Cal starting to fall back just a little bit. The Georgia and Auburn swimmers in the middle of the pool start to making the move. Copa Rope is such a great sprinter. She's in lane number four. Nika Mabry right underneath her in lane five. And there you see Copa Rope going by both swimmers right now, putting Auburn into the lead. So Auburn at the exchange, a slight lead over California and Georgia. The final event of the meet, the 400-yard freestyle relay. California slightly down in lane eight. Well, Cal's doing a great job of keeping it close. I just don't think they're going to have a chance at the end. The race really will come in the middle of the pool. Lanes four and five. Now you've got Christy Coventry from Auburn in lane four right there in the middle. She's going to need to against Paige Kern from Georgia right underneath her because they've got the great Maritza Pariah anchoring for Georgia. So Harper trying to hang on for California. Coventry for Auburn. Paige Kearns, as Rowdy said, Auburn has the lead. Auburn in lane four, white cap, and orange lettering. The Auburn Tigers. And into the water goes the anchor, Maggie Bowen. Can anybody catch her? Well, Probably not. What about this? What about this? You've got the great Natalie Cog, great sprinters, Maritza Correa right there. All of them breaking so many American records. This is so appropriate, appropriate to have this come down to this right there. You see Maritza Correa riding her shoulder. What she's done is she's moved over against the lane line and starting to hug that, trying to catch any kind of draft she can. She's swimming real smart. Maggie Bowen keeping an eye on her, though. It is Auburn and Georgia. Bowen and Karai into the final 25 yards. Oh, good turn by Maggie Bowen there. Karai is with her, though. Shoulder over shoulder. Side by side. They come to the finish line. Five yards Karai to go. is going to get her. And Karai touches her out. That's a new record, too. Maritza Karai touches out Maggie Bowen. And... 13-13-71. So Georgia wins it. And Maritza Karaya, another win. But the Auburn Tigers are going to celebrate. They their... might have lost the battle, but they won the war on this with Maggie Bowen, head coach David associate head coach Kim Bracken, who's been such a glue for this team this year. You can see him starting to celebrate. What a wonderful competition for, there's David Marsh right there, the head coach. He was the NCAA coach of the year last season. And he may be the coach of the year again this year. The Auburn Tigers have won it. We'll be able to talk to him right after this. Just minutes ago, a moment of reflection for the Auburn Tigers. Their star, Maggie Bowen, the head coach, David Marsh, associate head coach, Kim Bracken. 
The Auburn Tigers have won their first NCAA Women's Swimming and Diving Championship. They are out to accept their championship trophy. Auburn blows away the field, Georgia second, Stanford, Southern Cal, and Arizona, the top five, Texas, Florida, California, SMU, Arizona State, and Indiana rounding it out. Speaking of rounding, let's go down to my partner, Rowdy Gaines. Rowdy? David, congratulations, long time coming. At what point during this competition did you say, hey, you know what, maybe we've got a chance to win this thing? You know when I, you know when I was rowdy? It was in November. When these ladies right here committed to a special program, a special program that, that Kim and the coaching staff designed, and these guys right here, these ladies right here, they carried it through. There was not, there, you know, it was a matter of could we put together the meet at the meet. And these 11 ladies behind me all swam great this weekend. And uh, whether we'd have been first or fifth, I'd have been thrilled. But you know what? It's great to be national champions. You know, you talked so much in the meeting that we were in a little while ago about the September 11th tragedy and what that has meant to your team. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we wore the caps with uh, Mike Spann on it. And he was the, the first uh, uh, victim of that, uh, of the, you know, terror, the, the, the fight. Um, what it means is that we have perspective of not only is it important to uh, to, to, to be uh, patriotic citizens, but it's important to, to go for your dreams. These ladies had a dream this year, a dream that most people didn't think we were going to do. But we, uh, they believed in each other, believed in what it was all about. I count these girls as a blessing from God, Rowdy. And uh, they are, uh, they just, it's been an awesome year, awesome experience. First one for Auburn on the national title scene. There'll be many more to come in, in other sports, I'm sure. But for now, we're just going to enjoy this, this moment. Head coach David Marsh, associate head coach Kim Bracken, congratulations all of you guys. It will go down as the fastest swim meet in NCAA women's championship history. 15 records were broken, 14 American and one NCAA. Natalie Coughlin is the swimmer of the meet. She broke six American records in four separate events. We hope you enjoyed it. For Rowdy Gaines and Cynthia Potter, I'm Chris Marlowe. So long from Austin, Texas, where the Auburn Tigers reign supreme. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.